I'm really looking forward to visiting with uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain, Tony Blair. He's a, he's a friend. He's, uh, he's a strong leader. He and I are bound by the strong conviction that freedom uh, belongs to everybody and that we're going to work together to make the world a more peaceful place. Greatly disturbed by the news from the Middle East today. There's been yet another suicide bombing. It is clear that those who want to use terror to stop any process for peace are still active. In order to achieve peace, all countries in that region must be responsible for take responsibility, do their best to fight off terror. And uh, I know the Prime Minister joins me as we mourn the loss of life, but we are going to continue uh, to work toward peace in the Middle East, two states living side by side in peace is the vision. And we will continue to work with those who share that vision for the sake of the Israeli people and for the sake of the Palestinians. President, first of all, I'm very pleased to see you again and uh, exchange uh, views on, on a, a range of issues that confront us at the moment, and I entirely agree with what you said a moment or two ago. Our thoughts are obviously with the victims of the latest terrorist outrage in Israel, and the two things that are so clear is that, first of all, we need the action on security and action against terrorism, and secondly, to make progress in building a lasting peace in that region, based, as you say, on the, the two-state solution. And it's, it's an issue that I think what, what is interesting is that the whole world wants to see us now I mean, take this very firm stand against terrorism, against issues of weapons of mass destruction, but also try and make sure that we can provide a secure uh, future with lasting peace in the Middle East. I think those issues are all very much uh, linked together. We'll take a question of these. Greg. President, can you tell us if you've had a chance to speak to, to, speak to the German Chancellor Schroeder yet? I did. I, I, had a, I had a cordial meeting, not meeting last night. We greeted each other can you give us, cordially. Can you give us an assessment of uh, the state of U.S. German relations in light of recent elections? Uh, it's a, it's a, Germany is uh, an important friend of the United States, and we've got a uh, uh, a relationship to maintain, and we will maintain it. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you put a formal request to Britain and other countries to supply troops. Have we? Conflict in Iraq. Is, it, is that a question, have we, or is a, a, a sort of statement? I, I understood you had. Oh, I, I see. What your expectation was. What well, my expectation is, is that we can do this peacefully if Saddam Hussein disarms. That's my expectation. Uh, Mr. Saddam Hussein has got uh, a decision to make. Will he uphold the agreement that he has made? And if he chooses to do so by disarming peacefully, the world will be better off for it. If he chooses not to disarm, we will work with our close friends, the closest of which is Great Britain, and we will disarm him. But our first choice is not to use the military option. Our first choice is for Mr. Saddam Hussein to disarm, and that's where we'll be devoting a lot of our energies. And Prime Minister, you have this request now. You also seem to have a prospect of another fire strike as well. Do you believe that many British troops and reserves are going to have to prepare for a Christmas away from their family celebrations and either fighting fires or fighting Saddam Hussein? Well, we will do what's necessary both uh, to secure ourselves at home and to make sure that the will of the United Nations is enforced abroad. And I think what you will find here at this NATO summit is a total and united determination on behalf of the international community, reflected in the unanimous United Nations resolution that Saddam Hussein has to disarm himself of all weapons of mass destruction. And how that happens is a choice for him. Uh, we hope and want it to happen 
through the United Nations inspectors, mandated by the whole of the international community. But if he fails to cooperate with them, if he fails to do all he can, and that is within his power, to help that process of disarmament through the United Nations, then he will be disarmed by force. And that is the clear will of the international community. And I think you will find now that there is a consensus for that position virtually right across the civilized world. Thank you all very much. Yeah.